everyone, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today we're going to be talking about using a refrigerator in our teardrop or tiny camper. There's a lot we could talk about here. It's a huge topic. So I'm going to narrow it down to 12 volt compressor style refrigerators. So I'm not going to talk about the gas fridges or the three in one. Now I'm using the Bouge RV 23 core as an example here, but I'll include different options for links in the comments below because you might want to go with a different brand or a different style. This isn't a sponsored video, I just love this refrigerator. I'd give it five stars, I'd give it six stars if I could. I've used it for over a hundred nights camping and this refrigerator is extremely efficient and the perfect size for what I need. So there's a lot to cover today, let's get to it. So this style of refrigerator is going to run just like the one we have at home. There's a thermostat and a compressor that turns on and off and it's going to maintain the temperature that we set it at. Because it's DC, it's designed to run with batteries. It runs on direct current. So it's going to be the perfect option for off-grid camping. If you go with a dormitory style fridge or an AC fridge, you're going to need an inverter or to run off a generator when we're doing dispersed camping. Because the door opens frontwards, that allows the heat to rise. The cool air is going to come out. So this chest style feature on these DC refrigerators are going to be a much much better option for long-term dispersed camping. Now with our teardrops and tiny campers, size matters. We want to go with the biggest fridge we can, but a lot of times we don't have much space to work with. The reason I'm highlighting this Bouge RV 23 is because it fits without modifications in any of these tiny campers that were set up to hold a cooler. Even this bushwhacker galley that has a very odd space for the fridge will allow this to fit in without any modifications. Now we can go on to install sliders and do some different things. We're gonna cover that in the future. But for the time being, this fridge does a really good job fitting anywhere. If your camper has a cutout for a cooler or already has a slider, make sure we measure the space that we're gonna go with. Bouge RV makes a bigger one and a lot of different brands make a larger refrigerator to fit in these spaces. You might have the opportunity to go with a little bit larger of a refrigerator. We always have to look at height just as much as length and width as the galley door comes down. We wanna make sure the fridge we're getting is gonna fit in the space we're going with. So for the people who do have a bushwhacker, you just take out this little base that came underneath your cooler and this refrigerator will fit in perfectly. Keep the vents face to the front and it gives you a little extra space to be able to open the top, store a pot, pan, cutting board. It works out really well to be able to do this with no modification. So for me, I still consider this a supplement to an ice chest. I'm not getting rid of my traditional cooler just yet. There's something to be said about pulling a drink that's been stored on ice and just having at it at the campsite. I'm not willing to leave that behind yet, but to be able to store milk or sandwich meat or things that we don't want just soaking in ice water all day, this is gonna be light years ahead of that ice chest. The other thing that I can do here, this is also a freezer. So you can use this to store frozen water and be able to replenish the store of ice that you have inside your chest. But the ability to go camping for weeks on end without coming out of the woods to get ice is just a huge advantage. So it's impossible for me to do this video about bushwhackers without hating on this <laughs> Coleman power cooler for a little bit. These are not refrigerators. These thermal electric coolers, power coolers, Peltier coolers, they're designed to run continuously and try to lower the ambient air temperature by 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So if it stays 70 degrees, this can do a good job keeping your food safe. The moment it gets to 80 degrees, you're gonna lose a food safe temperature inside this cooler. The problem is that nothing produces cold. It, everything is trying to remove heat, no matter what type of cooler or refrigerator we're going with. So this thing pumps heat into a confined space in your galley. 
it raises the temperature up and your food temperature just fluctuates. You do not want to rely on one of these for items that have to be kept cold. You put some potato salad in this thing and go for a road trip and you're going to be heading to the hospital, not a campsite. This is not a safe way to store food because it runs continuously. It uses over 10 times the amount of energy as this Bouge RV23. So it would also require thousands of dollars worth of batteries and solar to be able to run this in an off-grid uh, situation. So when you're talking about 12 volt compressor refrigerators, there's gonna be a balance between performance, size, and efficiency. And it's very difficult to find those numbers. You do a much better job searching on YouTube than you do owner's manuals because there's so many variables it's difficult to discuss. This refrigerator for me, the Bouge RV23, uses between 100 and 150 watts per day. That is remarkably efficient. I can replace that amount of energy with a very cheap battery and a very inexpensive solar setup. So this is the way to go for me. Compared to what I was getting on that power cooler, I took that thing and I nailed it to the wall of the garage as a reminder to never buy a device like that again. So even more important than the performance of your device is learning how to use these compressor refrigerators. If you just plug it in and go, you're not going to get nearly the same performance as somebody who understands how to use these. They're all going to come with both an AC converter device as well as a DC device. We want to use both of these. You're going to run on AC any chance you can get. It runs at a higher, more steady voltage and leads to higher performance. Pre-chill your refrigerator before you leave. Plug this device into AC, plug your camper in, read your owner's manual. This has a max setting, a turbo cool. That's going to do a great job pre-chilling your food. You also want to put cold food in. If you just take warm room temperature food, it's going to use a lot more energy to chill it than if you can get pre-chilled food to go in here. Like I said, you might want to mix some frozen items in here. Once you hit the road or you lose the shore power that you had, you're going to go to the DC connection. This is a lot more efficient. Going from turbo and max mode, you're going to set it down into eco mode. And now it's going to maintain the chilled food instead of having to run the compressor to chill things down. This is going to 5x the amount of time that you can spend with this cooler running. When you're at the campsite, you're going to stay on eco mode. If you want to turn it to max mode, do it when you're getting high input from your solar panels. These little tricks are what allow me to run indefinitely with this refrigerator. I've been out for over 30 days taking a road trip, running this refrigerator off an AGM, and I never got close to depleting the battery level that we were using. We used just a modest amount of solar to do that. So those tips and tricks are going to take you a long way. Make sure you read your owner's manual. Okay, folks, so if you go camping as much as I do and you don't want to live on MREs and freeze-dried food, getting a 12-volt refrigerator is a huge, huge upgrade. No trips out of the woods to get ice. I hope you'll leave a comment with your tips and tricks. Share what device you're using and how it works for you. That's how I learn, and that's how we have a single source for a lot of people to come together and share our ideas. So I hope you'll take the time to do that. As far as this Bouge RV23, I took it on a road trip for over 30 days. I ran it on a cheap AGM and a modest amount of solar. It kept up the whole time. So there's not much more I can say about this than I give it an enthusiastic two thumbs up. So please share your devices and stay tuned. Uh, future video, I'm going to put this guy on a slider and expand my kitchen space back here. So you'll want to subscribe, hit the bell notification to check that video out. I'm also expanding to a second fridge. It's got a freezer. It runs on the portable power station. It allows me to stay out longer and still be able to eat fresh, high quality food. So thanks for watching. Make sure to check out those future videos.